I have to tell you uh, that we have serious bad news. I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm. As every day goes by, we just see our taxpayers' hard-earned cash that we would rather in our pockets yes. being taken away from us and wasted wherever we look. Yeah. It's truly, truly well, I said unbelievable. I Kevin O'Sullivan this morning, you know, if you're a benefit fraudster, if you're a criminal, if you're an illegal migrant, you get a better deal in this country than if you're an honest-to-goodness, hard-working taxpayer. And that sums We're it up. We're getting rinsed. That sums it up. We are getting absolutely ripped off, shafted, yeah. rinsed, wherever you turn. You've just talked about the, uh, the the cost of sort of activities in English speaking lessons yeah. for the the illegals on the barge. How about processing them quickly within two or three weeks, like used to happen 15 years ago right. before this incompetent government, and sending the vast majority who are economic migrants or are coming here for uh, illegal activities, sending them back to where they came from. Yeah. That's the best use of our taxpayers' cash. It's it's quite simple. Everyone knows that. Why on earth? Should we be spending all this money if they want to learn? Uh, if they want to learn English, it's a great language. Yeah, fantastic. Well, maybe use the free Wi-Fi that we get and do some free online lessons. Yes. What's wrong with that? Well, for exactly example? right. But why also, should we more, pay more shibboleths from the left, right? Because the left are always telling us, well, one of the reasons why they come here is because often they have a common language with us because many of them speak English. Well, obviously the ones going to Dorset don't speak English. <laughs> so which ones are they talking about? Look, we just know this whole thing is a con. Yeah. And uh, talking of cons. The other massive news that uh, in the Daily Mail today is about the huge increase in benefit fraud. Yeah. Now, I've talked about the 5.2 million people on out-of-work benefits. Now, of course, there are many within there that are genuine. And, of course, you, ha you have a, a welfare system that protects the vulnerable, the genuinely yeah. sick, the genuinely disabled. That is an absolute given. We all agree with that. Yeah, that's fine. But that is, that is very different from the vast amount of fraud that is going on. They're now suggesting that one in five of for, uh, benefits claimants yeah. is fraudulent. One in five. Mm. If you apply that over the five million, that's a million people. Yeah. I'm hearing some shocking stories all over the place because it's so easy, basically, to sign up and uh, to, to sign on and to get benefits right. without any form of work conditions. And I repeat, look, that is not in any way to... Uh, to, to ignore the fact that there are many genuine benefits claimants. Yeah. But I'm afraid to say that there are also many who are basically on the take and on the make, and it's costing us billions. They reckon the number's now up to over eight billion quid yeah. a year. Unbelievable. This is serious again, cash. A, another sort of anomaly in, in the conversation is that whenever we talk about benefit fraud, on this show anyway, people always message me and say, oh, you've got no idea how hard it is to get benefits. They're always means testing you, they're always asking you to turn up for this and that and take an exam or, or have a, a medical or something like that. But obviously, like all things in this country, the people who need the money are probably put through the mill. But those who know the system and know how to gain the system, uh, they just get more money and know how to do it. The, this is exactly the point. And people are using false names, yeah. they're using false national insurance numbers. There is a massive, massive scam. And as you say, those who know how to game the system are gaming it, yeah. working it out. And, you know, the genuine uh, claimants, uh, that, you know, they are essentially, uh, they are checked and things. And I, do, I hear exactly the same stories as yeah. you. But all that does is highlight the madness of the system. And it's just not good enough. Uh, so there's a massive waste of cash there. And then yesterday, we hear yet again what we all know about HS2. Yeah. A report from MPs and the Public Accounts Committee just confirming the lunacy of the fact that this this train, this line, it, it's not going to get to the centre of London because they've delayed it by many years to get to right. Euston Station because the cost of the station uh, has gone up by billions. So they've sort of delayed it until it's now planned for, over, for beyond 2040. Yeah. I mean... It's just... But why are they talking about a Euston HS2 terminus anyway? Because, as far as I know, they're bringing it to Old Oak Common, which is about no, you know, the original plan miles was to, away. The original plan was to bring it to Euston. Yeah. And then they realised that it was going to cost so much more. Yeah. And they said, well, maybe we could stop it in some far-flung yeah, parts so of North-West like West London of Shepherd's Bush. that no-one's ever heard of. Right. It's near Wormwood Scrubs. Just go straight to jail. Yeah, but even though the whole point of it was to try and save time to get to centre of London, yeah. but now it's not coming to the centre of London, so the whole point of right. it has reversed, right. then they suddenly realised, oh, maybe people do work 
on trains after all, therefore mm. they're less concerned about the time it takes, so maybe we'll use the capacity argument. Well, that's not working so right. well. Now we realise that lots of people are working from home. So the whole thing... So I'm a bit confused. So is the train coming to Euston or not, then? No. It's not? It's not. But we're spending no. 4.8 also, oh, billion... Way, hang on. And we're spending 4.8 billion on a terminus that isn't actually going to see the train coming into it. Correct. Excellent. And it's, and it's not going to go beyond <laughs> Birmingham, either, because they've paused <laughs> that, because mate. it was costing something. So basically, all it's going to go is from northwest Trains London... To nowhere. ...to south-east Birmingham. Excellent. It's a train from nowhere yeah. to nowhere. Right, and it takes 20 minutes less time than the normal train, but by the time you've messed about getting from Old Oak Common into Euston, that's about 45 minutes. Yeah, so you're a net 25 minutes So you're actually losing down. time <laughs> I mean, and paying more money. And this thing comes up with this rubbish? Look, the, I've said it before, the first loss is the best loss. Yeah. If you scrap HS2, net of everything right. you might spend up in the north with some uh, some important infrastructure schemes yeah. up there, you're going to be 50 billion quid better off Gee, than this God. absolute madness. So that's another uh, example yeah. of egregious so tax So as far rates. as I can make out, we've now counted up to somewhere like 15 billion pounds of our money that we don't have that we're spending on these projects. It's, I mean, these sums, uh, they're, 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 they're beyond, they are eye-watering. But it's our cash. Mm. There's no such thing as government right. money. There's only taxpayers' money. Right. And it's either going on English lessons down in some barge off Dorset coast, right. or it's being basically well, literally to, poured into the ground I was saying for, to, for a uh, train that goes yeah. to nowhere from nowhere. I, I was saying to Kevin, and like most self-employed people, I'm sure you've all had the same uh, bill from the HMRC department, uh, every July you have to send them a load of money uh, in lieu of what you might have to pay them in July. Uh, sorry, in January next year. But if you don't pay them, uh, they get very worked up and they start penalising you. And, you know, all I know is that my money goes to the government one way. I get nothing back. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. You've you just know. reminded me of a job I've got to do, there you which go. is send them some money yeah, today. Send them some <laughs> Money. You know, they need your money. Come on. You know, we've got uh, HS2 terminus to build, even though the train doesn't go there. We've got some benefit fraud to pay for. We've got some migrants that need to learn English. Why don't you just take all my money and be done with it? But I have some good news. Go on. I do have some good Come news. On. Yes. We can do with that. Uh, that, 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 that highly skilled, mm. very competent, very successful Governor of the Bank of England oh, yes. has decided Andrew that because Bailey. Andrew Bailey, no less. Yeah. Uh, the one that promised me a letter two years ago, and I'm still waiting for oh, a yeah. substantive right. reply. That's the guy. Mm. Uh, he uh, he's decided that in order to get towards net zero targets and to to help uh, deal with climate change, yes. that they're going to put some big heat pumps underneath the Bank of England now, I'm in the city of London, I'm uh, rather than this up. the existing perfectly good uh, gas heating right. system. So he thinks that's a good idea, even though, even though. Because their workers are only rocking up two days a week, yeah. they're saving on energy anyway. Well, exactly. But he's also he's got to make some money as well because he needs to put in some gender-neutral toilets on the seventh floor, apparently, the Bank of England. Uh, and he also has to make sure that he's in line uh, with the gender diversity project, as God. outlined by Stonewall, uh, who've got nothing to do with banking, but apparently everything to do uh, with running the country. It's unbelievable, this organisation. I mean, it really is. So, so he's going to waste money on a bunch of heat pumps, yeah. and now he's going to waste money on, on a bunch of gender-neutral toilets. Yeah that nobody wants and nobody asked for. And whose cash is it? Ours. It's ours. It's not Listen theirs. To this. Listen to this. Decarbonisation will require a careful and architecturally sensitive approach. Why? What are they decarbonising? It's the Bank of England. Why do you need an architecturally sensitive heat pump under the ground, for heaven's sake? Why are they? I don't want an architecturally sensitive gender-neutral toilet. Also, why are they? I'm quite happy with the gents, thanks very much. Why are they climate transitioning? Is that some kind of trans thing? That's what, that's know. a very confused stonewall. Yeah. Wall. Very, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was a stone wall. Now I want to transition into something else. I don't want to transition into the Stone Age. Maybe, That's what I yeah. want to transition <laughs> to. It's I mean, just, I it mean, is. I mean, it's, the world has gone completely insane. Completely bonkers. It didn't used to be this mad. No, Even it didn't. last year. What's happened? I don't know what's happened. All I know is that if you and I were in charge, things would get a Dear lot, lot better. I think we might have very to start organising an actually armed uh, insurrection. <laughs> I'm sick to death of it. Um, Richard Tice is here. I don't know what we're going to do next. Um, we've done everything.